This is the Citizen Link Report. If you find our insights helpful, would you support our video efforts? Your gift of $25 or more goes a long ways. Covers the crew, lights, cameras, all that. Just click on Donate. Thanks from all of us. Judges in Virginia and Florida say that marriage is not what marriage is. We'll put it in the context of the election and what has to happen after that. This is the Citizen Link Report. Hi, I'm Stuart Shepard along with Tom Minnery, president of Citizen Link. Hi, Tom. Hi, Stuart. Uh, we've seen now a local judge in Florida strike down the constitutional marriage amendment in that state. A federal appeals court in Virginia struck down the voter-approved constitutional amendment in that state. What's happening and how does it start to play out? Well, it's making a lot of people angry, including us, and we've seen it around the country now. And what's happening is the marriage issue is quickly turning into a religious liberty issue. The question so much now is not what is marriage, at least in the eyes of the courts. 19 states now include same-sex marriage. It's going to be whether those of us who hold godly principles, biblical principles on the definition of marriage will be allowed to profess and keep those beliefs without being harassed by the state. It's, it's, uh, it's starting to remind me of where we were on the pro-life issue way back in 1973. We had that disastrous Roe v. Wade decision on abortion. It took us a long time to claw our way out of that. Uh, the first response uh, in 1973 was human life amendments. This was a disaster. We got to fix the wall with one big stone called a human life amendment, repair the wall. Yeah. It never happened. And gradually, there were other Supreme Court decisions, so the Webster decision, the Casey decision in the late 80s, early 90s, that allowed us to make some incremental progress on the pro-life issue. And in recent years, there have been a flood of uh, state-level laws limiting abortion. And I think that's eventually where we'll get on the right to proclaim our view of marriage despite what the courts have said. I'd like to draw out your thoughts a bit on how this is now a religious freedom issue as opposed to uh, something that we've been told for decades now, this won't really impact anybody. It's just going to give more people access to marriage, but that's not what's happening. Well, we have seen the inhibitions on the entire wedding industry against people who bake cakes and supply flowers and do catering who do not wish to participate in same-sex marriage ceremonies now being forced out of business or in the case of the wedding photographer in New Mexico forced to pay large fines. So this does have a heavy, heavy burden on those who choose not to associate with uh, same-sex marriage. And we're also seeing moves at the state level and also talk at the federal level to cut off any nonprofit organization that won't affirm same-sex marriage. If you don't follow that line of thinking, they're going to cut you out. Yeah, see, that's why it's a religious liberty issue, because it's based on our sincerely held religious beliefs that we come to this point and we say, this is where we stand, and we are citizens, and we would like our right to free expression of our religious views. Now let's talk about this in the context of the election. How do you see it playing into what's going to happen in November? I think in the short term, it looks not like 1973, but more like 1994. If you remember way back then, there was what was called a wave election in the, in the House of Representatives. For the first time in all but about 60 years, the Republicans captured the House of Representatives, and they did so with a huge gain. They won 54 seats. That had been unprecedented for Republicans to do. And it feels like the same kind of wave is building against Washington around the country as we approach the 2014 elections. And the issue predominantly is Obamacare. Do you remember what the dominant issue was way back in 1994? I, was it welfare reform? Or was it, it was, it was health care, then called Hillary Care. Hillary Care, you're yeah. right. And it was a single payer system. Uh, private companies were not even allowed to compete uh, for the business. It failed because it was so complicated. Now we, back then we had only people rebelling against it when they only could read about it. Now we have people trying to live with it and they're really rebelling against it. And that's why I think the uh, outlook is favorable for conservatives to take control of the Senate. And Tom, you're right about the Senate. It is the prize. Tell us why that is. That will allow Congress to have a united front against the policies of the president. I think that a conservative led Senate, along with a conservative-led House, will put bill after bill on the president's desk 
putting the pressure on him to sign things that he normally that normally would not get to him, right. such as fixes in Obamacare, such as uh, fixes in the IRS the system, such as fixes in the uh, Veterans Administration, such as fixes in the. Uh, uh, I, the, the tax structure, the uh, laborious tax forms that people have to uh, fill out every year, that must be changed. And I think a united Congress can do that and put the attention on the president where he does not want the attention to be located. And the Senate also gets to vote on nominees to the federal courts. That's right. And there's no longer that filibuster rule that requires 60 votes to uh, overcome something that's negative uh, to the majority in the Senate. That's good for Republicans. That was, uh, the rules were changed by the Democrats, of course, and now I suspect, suspect Republicans will use that to their favor should they win the majority. So we're seeing a lot of encouraging uh, energy out there concerning the House and the Senate and the possibility of gaining seats. The only poll, as they say, that matters is the one taken on Election Day. But then there's something that has to happen after that. What's that? Well, it's called the uh, 2016 presidential election. As soon as the midterm elections are completed, all eyes will turn on the candidates uh, of, from both parties trying to uh, win the nomination for Democratic and uh, Republican uh, presidential uh, nominations. Now, Tom, we're not deaf to what people are saying out there. We get to talk to a lot of people and a common sentiment, and I'm, I'm just raising this as what I'm hearing out there is, you know, we've lost it. It's all over uh, with, the, with marriage being redefined, with Obamacare being put in place, with the economy still in the tank after all these years. It's over. Some are even going so far as to saying the nation is over. How do you respond to that when people say well, that, that to you? Well, that comment was heard very frequently back in 1973 when the Roe v. Wade decision was handed down. Uh, we have lost our moral compass. We are uh, finished as a nation. But then the slow uh, slogging political fight began and a lot of babies have been protected since then because of people's patience and people's understanding that you can't get things done quickly in politics. You've got to work on it. And it, it's, uh, it's always a measure of people's willingness to stay engaged, stay involved in the challenges. There are always challenges to freedom, always challenges to religious expression. They always must be countered. People must always, always stay engaged and informed. Very good. Tom, thanks for your encouragement today. We needed that. You're welcome. All right, and thank you for watching. You may always write to us at mail at citizenlink.com. Pray for this election coming up and also be actively involved wherever you are in local races all the way up to federal races. Take part in the election process. And remember, most of all, not only to go vote, but also to take like-minded people to the polls with you. Remember to stand tall and be heard.